So I have a confession to make. Um, I like to call myself a real do-it-yourself kind of girl, someone who wants to do everything by herself, fix, fix her upper type. I'm the type of girl who can change her brake fluid while baking an apple pie and remodeling the bathroom. But here's what actually happens. I turn on some Journey, and I put the pie in the oven, and I call my dad. <laughs> my dad is the real deal. He can fix anything. I don't think I ever saw him out of his coveralls as a child unless he was um, flying a jet or at church. He's the type of guy who on our family vacations would be sitting under an umbrella wearing his 1970s white tennis shorts, reading his Chilton's automotive manual. <laughs> um, I hated these manuals as a child. I just have memories of sitting on a greasy garage bench and him telling me to read the step-by-step -step instructions for the 1970s sob that he was working on. Step 44E, <laughs> unscrew the four screws from the casing of the water pump, pull the hose out and drain into a basin. Step 44F, snack. Dad, I think we should get a snack. I think this is the time we should get a snack. This is the time when the daughter helping father scenario, I would get the light duty. Anybody who has a parent who fixes things or works on things knows what this means, you get to hold the light. <laughs> and that consists of, Erica, pay attention to the left. Do you not see what I'm working on to the left? I just wanted to go outside and play, but that sob was kind of my jungle, jungle gym. Over time, I got better in the garage, like, I totally know what a crescent wrench is now. <laughs> but honestly, every single do-it-yourself fixer-upper project I've ever worked on is a success because of my father. For instance, one time I came home and my water heater had this beautiful waterfall coming out of the top of it, flooding a river into the kitchen. And I called my dad and he came running over, you know, immediately. And I stuck around just long enough to figure out what soldering meant, and then I went for a run. <laughs> it's not just me, though. Everyone calls my dad. And I, I just want to explain, like, sometimes my mom has to answer the phone and say my dad's not home because everybody needs help from my dad. Uh, probably 20% of you in the audience right now have had help from my dad, whether you know it or not. <laughs> like, if you were on the side of Minnesota with your hood up, he was the one who stopped and fixed your car. <laughs> Over the past several years, I've kind of noticed this change in my dad. Like, he had a slight limp, and when he was giving me these very step-by-step -step instructions, he started to stutter. And then there was this tremor in his right arm. And what happened is my dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Briefly described, Parkinson's affects the brain. And it affects how your body moves. So think of it like this. Your brain is a Chilton's manual giving you all these instructions on what to do. Parkinson's messes all of that up and mixes up the instructions. So your body can't move when you want it to. For someone who is the best fixer-up in the world, it doesn't work anymore. My selfish biggest fear about my dad having Parkinson's is that he's not going to be my saving grace and fix everything for me. Um, this year, I needed to paint the laundry room. Easy enough, brown paint on the walls, white paint on the ceiling. So I started to cut in the brown and I realized I don't actually know how to cut in a wall. And all of a sudden, the ceiling turned brown with smudges. <laughs> So I wiped it off with a rag and I called my dad and asked him over for dinner. <laughs> he came over in his coveralls. <laughs> his hand was shaking so bad when he dipped the paintbrush into the paint that paint flicked all over the floor. When he crawled up the ladder, he was so unstable and hunched over. 
And as he got up to the corner of the wall, he all of a sudden, the Parkinson's just disappeared. And that slow, methodical thought came back. And he cut this perfect straight line across the laundry room ceiling. All I could say was, uh, Dad, I'll go get the light from the garage. <laughs> it's not very often I'm away from my dad via cell phone or sat phone or Delorme or anything I can use to get a hold of my dad. But there was this one time when I was in Chile and I was on a ski trip and I flew into Bomaseda to meet my girlfriend and she picked me up with her niece in her Gaucho's brand new white Toyota truck. And I just need to set the stage for you. This truck was shipped from the US. Each part of it was hand-picked by this Gaucho. If you thought Gauchos loved their horses, you should see them with their trucks. So we're driving this truck up a 3,000 foot pass to get to the skier area and a blizzard comes in and Rachel needs to pull the truck over to put it into four-wheel drive. As she pulls over and pushes the truck into four-wheel drive, the entire knob comes out in her hand. She turns white because she's scared of the gaucho. I turn white because I'm freaked out that we need to get over this 3,000-foot pass. Her niece turns white because she was car sick and she just starts puking everywhere. <laughs> so we have snow coming in the car, a puking niece, and all I want is my dad to fix this problem, and instead, I'm handed a Leatherman. So Rachel and I pull the carpet off the center console, and I just instinctively start unscrewing every single screw I can find. And I pull off the plastic console, and there is the ground and the transfer case. And I'm like, I don't know what to do, so I take the pliers and I pull apart the place I think that the shifty knobby thing should go and I'm jamming it in and Rachel's pushing the truck back and forth into neutral and then I hear this click and the truck goes into four-wheel drive and Rachel and I just start screaming because we just saved this Toyota Tundra for the gaucho but really what I realized is I kind of can do things by myself and maybe at some point, I'll work on things and my dad can hold the light. Thank you.